yan preparing now we're live on Facebook <clears throat> um good evening everyone to all our Zoom participants we are 39 here right now and then for all the, those who are watching wherever you are um especially if you're in the Philippines Middle East hi and then um, I would like to congratulate uh, for the nurses um, um, who are bound to United States who got their interview date. So, konting kembot na lang, makukuha niyo na yung pangarap ninyo. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so, umpisahan na natin. And we have World English Review right now in our very own um, Sir Lee J. Sir Lee J. Yeah, hi, it's good evening. Good evening to the people in the Philippines and uh, good morning or uh, good afternoon to those who are somewhere else. Magandang gabi po sa inyo. Okay, so Jeff, ano na, I'll take care of it so you can rest your throat. Medyo masakit po yung ano, dalamunan na uh, ating kasama. For those who are, are we streaming on YouTube? Yeah, for those who are on YouTube, you might want to transfer okay, to to our Zoom meeting room so that you can participate more. Okay, because towards the end of this session, uh, okay, for those who are on FB, all right, uh, yeah, uh, I call this, uh, I'm going to be giving you the chance to share your answers to some speaking questions. And, you know, if I have time, I'll give you corrections, right? So uh, let me share my screen. Here you go. Uh -huh. Kita ba? Okay, let me just um, double check this. There you go. All right. <clears throat> so welcome, welcome, welcome to our free IELTS lecture for today. My name is Lee from World English uh, Reviews. Okay, I'm CELTA certified, got a band nine. Okay, the title of today's, uh, tonight's uh, webinar topic is uh, Easy Hacks for a Better Speaking Score. Okay, so rules of conduct for this webinar. Uh, first of all, uh, enjoy the seminar. Again, don't hesitate to ask questions while it's free. Uh, your host is an expert on the subject, okay, and uh, information about our review programs. Uh, will be given, so don't worry. Okay? For those who are interested uh, in seeking additional help, okay, uh, magbibigay, po kami ng, <coughs> magbibigay po kami ng extra information later on. Okay, let me uh, introduce myself first. Again, my name is Lee. I started teaching in 2005. I teach uh, IELTS, OET, English. Uh, civil service exam preparation. I also uh, did some training, okay, for uh, call center agents. So newly hired agents, po, and I do some part time work in that industry. My overall IELTS score is nine. My speaking score is nine. I'm civil service eligible. I have a certification from Cambridge CELTA, okay, and uh, I'm not blonde. I don't have a British. I don't have a British accent. <laughs> don't have a British accent. <clears throat> but I was still able to get a nine in speaking. So why did I say that? Because, you know, if I, <laughs> I with my scratchy voice, okay, and my neutral accent, I still got a nine, <clears throat> even if I spoke like It's actually twice. Not only I got nine in uh, 2019, and then I took the test uh, July. So wala pang one year, okay? July last year. So, nine din ulit. So, it's pretty consistent. Okay. Let me help you with this. All right. There you go. Congratulations daw. Oh, maraming salamat. <laughs> but, you know, if somebody is teaching IELTS, I think that, you know, uh, Mas maganda ko na kanain, of course. Okay. Uh, a speaking teacher should be, what, at least 8.5, in my opinion. Okay. I hope uh, nobody here okay, enrolled in a place where the teachers are only 6.5 uh, because uh, I do know a few. Okay. So, nako, sayang lang pera. Din so, anyway, maraming salamat po for those who said congratulations. 
So easy hacks for a better speaking score. Yeah. So ano po yung ano share ko sa inyo tonight. The first thing that I want to say okay, is this, okay? If you want to get a better score uh, in the speaking test, or actually in any other test, okay, uh, it's best, okay, if you know, you know, if you find out everything that you can about it. So, unang-una yung format. Alam nyo na ba yung format ng test? Okay, testing nga natin, okay? So, how many minutes is the speaking test? Type your answer in the chat box. Alam natin kung may prior knowledge na. Oh, perfect. Okay. Usually people say 15 minutes eh, because, you know, narinig daw sa ibang <laughs> tao. It's actually not. It's only 11 to 14 minutes. Ah, yun na. Sabi ko. Somebody says max 15 minutes. Actually, hindi po. Okay? It's only 11 to 14 minutes. It cannot, you know, finish uh, before 11 minutes. At hindi siya pwede lumabas ng 14. In fact, most examiners will finish it at around 13 and a half. Hindi po pwede mag 15 minutes yan. Okay? Yeah, but I do hear that, you know, from time to time. All right. Here are, here's more info, uh, some more information. Okay? So it's 11 to 14 minutes. It's a one-on-one -on -one interview, okay? And of course, guys, it's recorded, okay? Um, <clears throat> if, if your test is still following the old, you know, the old uh, style, okay? Yung face-to-face, -face, okay? You and the examiner in one room, then they'll be using an audio recorder, okay? However, uh, in many places, especially here in the Philippines, uh, ang ginagawa na nila is called VCS, okay? So it's video call speaking. So what they do is you won't be in the same room as the examiner. So pupunta ka sa venue, you're the, you're, you still need to go to the venue, but the examiner will be somewhere else. This is to avoid, of course, you know, infection, lalo na lakas ng COVID. Okay? So what they do is they use a program that's similar to Zoom. Okay, and then they will disinfect your room, your seat, everything, your table, <clears throat> uh, the pens that you're going to be using. Then they're going to give you a very nice headset, a very expensive headset. Okay, sa sobrang ganda niya, parang katabi niyo lang yung examiner ninyo. Okay, so you're going to be wearing a headset. Okay, so ano, it's just like having a, what, a Zoom meeting, a one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting. Okay, <clears throat> now... Um, what else do you need to know about it? Okay, so this interview, okay, the IELTS interview is divided into three parts. So part one, part two, part three. Ano po yung uh, significance ng mga parts na to? They start, you know, with easy to answer questions. And then it gets more and more difficult. What's the purpose of this? So that they can see Okay, your upper limit. Okay, one thing you need to remember is this. The examiner's job is to give you the highest score possible. Okay? They have to see your upper limits. Kaya pahirap ng pahirap yung test. Okay? Um, for instance, okay, for instance, if an examiner thinks, okay, okay, uh, that you you deserve a higher score, hihirapan niya yung tanong. Bako, kunwari, uh, if they ask you like, uh, you know, questions and then mga bandang pang band seven yung mga questions and you can answer them easily, then they will make the questions a little bit more difficult. Itataas nila mga band eight. Okay? And then, kung kaya kaya pa rin, okay, if you don't have a difficult time answering these questions, then they're gonna make it a little bit more challenging and maybe ask you questions that are level nine. How do they do this? By adjusting the language that they are using, okay? So they just make it more and more complex. So they might be asking different band levels the same technique, pero adjust nila yung vocab na ginagamit nila. They will adjust the expressions that they use or they might make the question a little bit more complex, okay? And then they will see kung hanggang saan yung kaya mo. So guys, that's very important. Why? It means that you should not be discouraged, okay? When they keep on giving you 
difficult questions. So I've been teaching for what, 16 years now. 16 years. A lot of clients come to me, sir. No, I think the examiner didn't like me because uh, she kept on giving, asking me very difficult questions. And I tell them, well, you should be happy. Why? Because it means they think you can still go higher. In fact, if they finish the interview with easy questions, wala na, mag-ipun ka na uli. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because... You know, they're probably going to give you a lower score. Guys, mas mahirap yung questions, mas maganda because it means that they think you're at that level. Okay, because they will not ask very difficult questions <clears throat> from the lower levels. For instance, okay, maybe some of you have taken the test before. Sino na yung naka-experience ng nakipag-debate sa kanya yung examiner or nag-disagree uh, sa kanya yung examiner? Okay, meron ba? Do we have... Uh, uh, participants today who've taken the test tapos nag-disagree or parang in Hawaii sila <laughs> examiner. Mm -hmm. Oh, so everyone is new. Nobody's taken the test yet. Uh -huh. Ah, merong isa. Okay. Someone indicated that. So, most people, what happens is they panic, no? When that happens. Guys, wag kayong magpapanic. Ako, <laughs> Nagi smile ako when that happens. They say, oh no, I don't agree. I think it should be the other way around. Why? Because they're trying to see, you know, if they can still give you a higher score. Hindi naman sila makikipag-debate sa band 5. O kaya sa band 4. They only start doing that. Okay? Kung, uh, when they start um, assessing you and pwede ko bang bigyan ng 7 to? Pwede ko bang bigyan? Can I give this candidate a higher score? Maybe a 7 or an 8. Okay? Because, you know, debating, disagreeing, that's a higher, you know, that's a higher what level task, a higher level language task. So, naga adjust po sila sa inyo. So, the interview is not generic. They do make a lot of adjustments to the candidates. Okay? Uh, what else do you need to know about it? Okay. Oh, I want to show you a sample of a test. Okay, sa, sa, no, instead of just telling you part one, part two, part three. So, I memorized my exam questions last 2019. Okay, anong gusto niyo makita? 2021 or 2019? I have them both. <clears throat> Which one would you like to see first? Mm -hmm. I check am I on mute? Both? Recent. Mayroon yung both. Oh, recent na muna. Let's take a look at <clears throat> the most recent, my most recent exam questions. You can take a screenshot if you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have too many things open. Okay, wait lang po. Okay, let's close this. There you go. Okay. Share screen. Ah, here. Finally. So on screen, you will see uh, all the questions they asked me. So I had the, enough time to memorize all of them. So pag babago, pag labas ko sa venue, I wrote them down on my, on my phone. Okay, so part one, tignan natin. <clears throat> What's your name? Where do you come from? Do you live in a house or in an apartment? Can you describe your house? What can you see from the window? Are there trees where you live? Of course. Okay. And do you like trees? Oh, yeah, definitely. So part one questions are not that complex. Okay. And they're going to be all about you and your opinions and what you like and what you don't like. Okay. So simply lang sila, di ba? So that's part one. You know, they give you a chance to warm up. They give you a chance to talk about familiar topics first. After that... Okay, you will move on to part two. Ito. Ang tawag sa part two ay individual long term. Okay, they call it a long term because you're going to be speaking for a long time, a longer amount of time compared to parts one and three. Okay, paano ba to? So they usually print them out on cards or if you're taking the video call speaking test like they do here in the Philippines, they will just show you that on screen. 
Okay, and nothing else. Wala kang ibang makikita. Just that one. Okay? Then they will give you one minute to think about your answer. Okay? And then they'll be providing you with some scratch, some pads, pad papers, okay, and uh, a pencil so that uh, you can, uh, you know, take down notes, make, uh, write down your notes. And then um, after one minute, pukunin na yung tanong. You won't be able to see the question again. That's why you need to make notes. That's why you need to practice making notes. All right? And after that, the examiner, okay. Yeah, if you have questions, guys, you can just type your, uh, you can just type them in the chat box. Po, okay? So anyway, and then the examiner will just stay quiet, stay silent for two minutes. Okay? Mananahimik lang yan. So, how do you know kung two minutes na? Well, you won't have a, you won't be allowed to wear a, a watch or bring a timer device with you. So, anong gagawin ninyo? You just rely on the examiner. Okay? Uh, just keep on talking until they interrupt you. Okay? Once the examiner asks a follow-up question, they will tell you to, okay, stop. We, we shall now move on to part three. No, they don't do it that way. They just ask another question. Something that's related to the part two question. Okay? For example, Last year, July, uh, my topic was uh, talk about a time you got lost in a town or a city. And then when we reached two minutes, okay, the follow-up question was, do you get lost often? And that's related to, you know, the part, uh, the part two question. Okay, so they tried to make it as natural as possible. Okay, I'm just going to lower all the hands so we don't get distracted. <coughs> okay. So anyway, uh, that's part two. Uh, what's the biggest challenge for uh, part two? A lot of people have a difficult time reaching two minutes. Okay. Sometimes others can reach two minutes, but they do this by repeating things that they've already said. Guys, mas maganda if you don't repeat things. Okay. So um, well, later we're going to have some, uh, some practice with this one. Okay, don't worry. I'll try to help you as much as I can within the two hours given to me. Okay. And then for part three, okay, it's called a two-way discussion. discussion Because the question and answer will go to the next level. Okay. So um, questions for part three are usually more complex okay, compared to part one. Okay. What else? And... And instead of asking, you know, all about you, okay, mas nilalawa ka nila yung questions, they start asking about, you know, other people, okay, in the Philippines, in your country, or around the world. Tulad nito, look, the first question, which do you prefer? So that's still, you know, a personal question, right? But the next one, what are the advantages and disadvantages of electronic maps? This is a more general question now. Do you think children should be taught how to read maps? So it's not just you. Okay, the last question, what's usually the first major decision that people <clears throat> make in their lives? So if you tell the examiner, oh, sir, the first major decision I made was this, then it's going to be, you know, slightly off topic because they're not asking about your opinions anymore. They're, they're asking about people. So that's others. So that's the general public. Okay. So anyway, we have a few messages here. Tingnan nga natin. Guys, um, it's better if you don't DM me. Just uh, send the question to everyone, okay? So that we, you know, everyone knows what we're talking about, so that everyone can learn from the question. So just, ano na lang, just uh, one direct message. Let's show the others. All right. So <clears throat> here's a. I think this is a nice question from CJ. So in speaking part two, when telling. When talking about a past story, something that you did in the past, okay, like this one, and we have to describe a person, a place, or an object, do we shift to the present tense and describe them? Okay. For example, the place is cozy or the place was cozy. She is smart. Uh, and if yes, what strategy in shifting tenses and not getting lost or confused? You know, 
I simplify things, no? <clears throat> I hate I hate it when, you know, things are very complex. Ako, my teaching philosophy is to simplify things. Just take a look at the question and then you answer that question. Kunare, you know, they ask you where this happened. So you discuss it, okay, during that time. Hindi ngayon, because they're not asking about what's happening now. Eh. They're asking about something in the past. So why do you need to shift? Okay? So, um, ano lang yan, huwag nyo nang pahirapan. Take a look at the question. Are they asking about something in the past? Boom, past tense. Are they asking about something that you do habitually? Something that you uh, do on a regular basis? Boom, present tense. Are they asking about plans or changes that might happen? Okay. <clears throat> Are they asking what if questions? Then you can use the future tense. Okay. Uh, don't make it too complex. Madali lang yan. Okay. What if I'm not familiar with the topic from Jazz? Uh, can they ask? Can they just ask another question, or I must answer the topic? Oh, I love this question. Gandarin ng tanong. Okay, no problem, CJ. Pwede to lang yan. Uh, guys, one of the hacks that I was gonna share this evening is you need to change your mindset about the test. Okay, because a lot of you. Okay, and I know this because I've handled thousands of people already. So, um, a lot of you, you have the wrong mindset about the test eh? because many people think that it's some sort of knowledge test. Okay? It's some sort of knowledge test that, you know, uh, you need to know everything. You need to be encyclopedic in your knowledge. You don't. Well, it helps. Right? Of course, maganda. It's an advantage. However, we cannot be experts, okay, on everything. All right. So, for instance, um, one of my students got asked, uh, oh, uh, "What is your opinion about GM crops?" Okay. So, what is your opinion about uh, genetically modified crops? I mean, it's gonna be difficult if you didn't study science in uh, in university, right? What if uh, your course was something else? I don't know, art yeah, or marketing and you didn't cover that. Okay? So is it impossible? Would it be impossible for a person to get a nine because they don't know anything about the topic? Hmm, think about it. Another one of my students got asked, do you think that graffiti can be considered as, you know, can be considered as art? Hey, Filipinos, no? <clears throat> We're not really interested in art, not as much as Europeans are, all right? Or not as much as Japanese, the Japanese people are. So, paano mo sasagutin yun? It would be unfair for them to expect, okay, to expect you to what? To be experts on everything. Alam niyo, pwede niyo mong sabihin na ganito eh. Oh, uh, you know what? Uh, I studied marketing in university and you know, uh, we didn't cover that topic. So, I don't really know much about you know, genetically modified crops. So, you know what? Uh, maybe I need to do a little bit more research before I'm able to give you uh, a good answer for that. Okay? So, ano pa? Uh, oh! <laughs> One of my students, okay, ito yung sinabi niya. Guys, ito. Verbatim to. Kasi right after sinabi niya sa akin. So, siya yung tinanong about graffiti. So, ito yung naka to, ah. This student got a night. <laughs> so, sabi ng examiner, <clears throat> um, do you think graffiti can be considered as an art form? Sabi niya, you know, I don't know how the hell I'm supposed to answer that. Okay, I studied nursing and, uh, <laughs> and I'm a Filipino. So honestly, we're not very interested about art. So I don't know how to answer your question. Boom. Back. I was really surprised. Okay, why? Because the what he was just the third maybe or fourth student of mine who got a nine of course nines are rare okay madala yung mga yan so oh sabi niya nagmura pa niya sabi niya i don't know how the hell am i supposed to answer that okay but you know what native speakers speak like that gusto niya maka nine if you're able to you know to speak like uh, those people in the movies that you're watching then definitely nine yan now sabi ni sir Jeff, Ah, uh, totoo no, nang tingin ko nakakapasa lang ng IELTS yung mayaman, social at matalino. Hindi, ako hindi naman ako mayaman. 
he didn't also shall them knows. Oh my God, no. When I was still studying in uh, in university, I didn't join my classmates in my section because they were they were wealthy. My yaman yung mga classmates ko. I think I was the poorest guy in class. Okay. Oh, sent tayo maglalunch. Oh, punta tayong pancake house. Oh my God. 300 pesos yung pinakamurang pancake sa pancake house nung panahon na yun sa Katipunan. So, pagkat sabi ka, ah, sige, sunod na lang ako. Then I don't show up. Okay, I go to the cafeteria and buy a 30 peso lunch. <laughs> and then, Sir Jeff, kahit hindi ka social norm na yaman, pwede, naka-nine nga ako eh. Okay? Mata Sir, matalino ko kasi. Uh, I didn't get any honors, you know. My, I think my last academic award was grade three. Okay, I didn't get anything in high school. Okay, I didn't get anything in, I was in the dean's list or natin eh. <laughs> Normal student lang. Okay, so hindi rin, tama ka, Sir Jeff, you don't need to be rich, social, or matalino. Okay, as long as you know what to do about the test and you have a good teacher, you can pass this test. Okay, other questions pa? Ah, from uh, Carla San Andres. Okay, is it fine to use you know often? You know, <laughs> it's okay to use um, you know, some of these words from time to time. Okay, but you know, not, not every sentence. Oh, I'm doing it. Right. Well, I, I guess it's fine because they still gave me a nine, right? <laughs> If you catch yourself making that mistake, it's okay. Uh, uh, hindi pa naman tapos yung test eh. As long as the test isn't finished yet, you can still redeem yourself. Uh, this reminds me of a uh, senator and presidential man in the but When he was just starting out, whenever he had an interview, he said, ah, you know, and, uh, oh, you know, and, you know, uh, you know, and it's like every sentence he was saying it. However, uh, he improved. So he's still saying it now, but it's not as frequent as he did uh, in the past. Ako personally, ang lagi kong sinasabi is, guys, uh, okay, what else? Yeah, you know, and uh, in the past, I, I usually said actually. Okay? But I guess during the test, I'm able to fix that because, uh, yeah, give me a perfect score, okay? Um, next from Krisha, how many sentences is recommended for answering? Is two to three sentences enough? Trish, two to three sentences is okay for part one. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think you should answer five or six sentences for part one because the questions are easy. I mean, what's your name? That's the first question. You can answer that with one sentence. But the rest of them, try for at least two. Okay, where do you come from? Huwag naman one sentence. Ah, Philippines. Huwag naman. Okay, at least two sentences. But uh, where do you come from? Do you need to answer that with four or five? That's too much. Okay? Yung part three naman, ito, uh, it's on screen, right? You can see it. And uh, which do you prefer? Maps on paper or electronic maps? What are the advantages and disadvantages of electronic maps? I'd probably may uh, say two sentences for advantages, two sentences for disadvantages. So four to five sentences naman ako for part three. So yung two to three, that's for part one lang, ma'am uh, Trisha. Okay, next. <laughs> Okay lang yan, Sir Jeff. Actually, I, I like your message. Okay. okay, no more questions? Magtanong lang kayo. I'll answer them as soon as I can. So let's continue. What was I talking about? So this is the uh, sample test. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, part one will take what? Depende. Sometimes, you know, it can be as short as uh, what? Three minutes? Can be four minutes? Definitely, part three will take the longest time because of the complexity of the sentences. Uh, five minutes to six minutes. So <clears throat> let's move on to the next one. Uh, we have a question here. Noted. Ah, all right. No problem. So know the format of the test. Any test, not just the IELTS test. <clears throat> the next tip that I can give you is... You, since the, you're taking a speaking test, 
you have to be familiar with the sound of your own voice. So we have a lot of participants tonight. We have how many people in this room? Let's see, where's the list? We have over 60 participants. So how many of you have tried uh, getting your cell phone, recording yourself, recording your answers, and then listening to it? Maybe you can just uh, raise your hand like this, do a reaction. Mm -hmm. Three people, okay. Anymore. So the rest of you, you haven't tried it? Ah, no, yeah. you, know, you have these wonderful mini computers. They're mini because they're small, but they're actually quite uh, powerful, no? If you have a nice phone and, and you're not using it, to improve your speaking performance. Sayang naman, you spend like 40,000, 50,000 for that phone. Okay, you can use it to easily improve your performance, your score in the IELTS speaking test. So if you haven't done it, do it tomorrow. Okay, in fact, in fact, if you're uh, practicing with, I, I think you conduct uh, some group practice, you invite each other to practice, right, in IFNG. In fact, I would, I would suggest that you record your practice sessions. Maybe not the whole thing, but just the parts that you'd like to listen to so that you can study it. Nothing can beat, you know, listening to, uh, listening to yourself, hearing your own voice. Mm -hmm. um, your voice sounds different. The way that you hear it and the way other people hear it, I think it's because of the vibrations in the bones, something like that. So it's better if you know how other people hear you. Why? Because you're not going to be grading yourself. You're going to be graded by an examiner. Also, if you record yourself and then you listen to it, you will probably notice many of the most common mistakes that you make. For example, uh, words that you mispronounce, words that you always use, words that you use repeatedly, or maybe uh, you'll notice some of the words that you don't paraphrase. If you haven't been recording yourself, you're missing. Gamitin niyo po. Saya. And hopefully, you won't just do it once. You'll do it regularly, like maybe three times a week. Because you don't need to practice for one hour each time. You can practice for as little as 10 minutes or 15 minutes. So start doing it. Uh, maybe uh, the best way to do it would be to set a reminder, set an alarm. So that you don't forget, or you, uh, what? if you're using planners, which are very nice, actually a study planner, then uh, you can uh, take note of the days or of the time slots that you'd like to uh, use to record yourself. The next tip I'd like to give you is this uh, you should know how to adapt to the person giving the score. Sino ba yung score sa inyo? Is it yourself? Or is it another person? It's another person and it's the examiner. And you know what? There are certain patterns to people. And if you tell them, alam niyo naman to, politicians do this all the time. If you tell people what they want to hear, they tend to have a better opinion of you. And in the IELTS test, it can translate to a better score. Hmm. So ano ba yung profile ng mga examiners from, uh, from the information that you've gathered? So let's see. Uh, chismisan tayo. So, usually, ano yung gender? Ano ba yung nalaman nyo na? What gender? What age group do they belong to? What kind of education do they have? What do you think are their opinions on certain topics? Palagay nyo. Doon tayo sa edad. How old do you think <laughs> most examiners are? Are they 19 years old? Are they 24 years old? 25? Palagay nyo po. Type your answer in the chat box. 20s? I don't know any examiners in their 20s. The youngest one I know. Oops. Nah. Hula lang, okay. Uh, 30s? Uh, I, 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 teach, uh, in, I teach in a Korean company based and I have a lot of clients in Seoul. So the feedback I get from my Korean students is most of the examiners in Korea are in their 50s, okay, 50s, even 60s. 
most of them are men. Most of them are white. Because I've never had a student who told me my examiner was Korean. Mukamadalang. Right? But we're talking about the Philippines. How about in the, um, for those in the Middle East, um, the feedback that I get from my clients there is a lot of examiners are expats. It's, it's rare to find an Arab uh, examiner. Right? Uh, how about in the Philippines? Uh, oh, I think most of your guesses are right. Now they're from 40s to their 60s. I would say probably the youngest is they hired examiners recently. So I, I saw a few I saw a few younger ones, but most of the ones that I know who've been there for a long time, they're a bit older, about my age. 40 to 50 would be like the median age. Okay, so next gender tire. Do you think most of them are men or most of them are women? <laughs> Mas marami ba ang babae o mas maraming lalaking examiner? In the Philippines, most examiners, well, from this is my, uh, I don't have a comprehensive list, of course, but the ones that I've met, because I conduct workshops, you know, with, uh, <laughs> with examiners, uh, almost, uh, what, two or three times a year, except during uh, the, the pandemic, most of them are, Women. In fact, how many male examiners have I met? Uh, I've only met three, and I've been doing this for I've been doing this for sixteen years. The rest of the ones that I've I've met, they're all female. Is that important? Yes, it is important because you can use it. You can use it to come up with answers that they will like. For instance, if I ask you a okay, quick uh, quick session now. If the question was talk about a historical figure that you admire, sinong ime mention nyo? Can you type it in the chat box? The first one that comes to mind. Sige, historical figure from any country, of course, and from any any year. Jose Rizal, <laughs> Nino Yakito, Ferdinand Marcos, puro ganyan yung sinasabi sa akin. <laughs> Who else? Korea, you know, yeah. Come on. Who's the first one that came to mind? Jose Rizal, Cory. How about the others? Oh, Nelson Mandela, I don't. Who else? I've never had anyone answer me Nelson Mandela. But it would be nice. Princess Di. Oh, sino yung isasagot niyo sa exam niyo? A historical figure. Ang dami niya. That's billions of people. What I notice is, a lot of people tend to answer, you know, with uh, with male figures or male characters. Talk about a person you admire, lalaki na naman. You know what? If my examiner, okay, if my examiner was a woman, I'd, you know, I'd mention a woman. It's more advantageous kasi. Okay. I'm surprised nobody's mentioning uh, the founder of your profession. That's an easy answer. You're supposed to know a lot about her, right? Okay. That's Imam Flor, Florence. Yeah, Florence Nightingale, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's the first one. I If if I were a nurse, you know what I'm Okay. If your examiner is female, what kind of answers would they like to hear? Okay. Oh, Mahatma Gandhi. That's what I answered. Okay. That was my uh, uh, last one of my exams. I think my 2019 exam. Talk about an intelligent person that you admire. I answered Mahatma Gandhi. Kasi kakabasa ko pa lang ng something about him. All right? <clears throat> so, you can actually tweak your answers. Okay, to what the examiner likes. If you think a little bit about them, instead of just focusing on you, observe. Diba tingnan niyo? Uy, she's older than me. She's well-educated. Mm, probably not religious. Oh, she seems like she lives here in Manila. I'm gonna talk about Manila traffic. I think that was one of the things that uh, helped me get a night in my last test because talk about... Uh, 
we we'll talk about uh, what's the question again? Talk about a time you got lost in a town or in a city. I've gotten lost in many places, but uh, I I decided to talk about getting lost in Makati because I knew that there was a good chance that the examiner shares the same experience with me. So you know what? I was able to make my examiner laugh. Boong part two, ayun, napapasmile niyan and then she couldn't help herself tumawa. In fact, they're not supposed really, their advice against showing too much emotion during the test, pero hindi niya napigilan. Alright? So if you can make your examiner laugh, if you can anticipate what kind of answers they'd like to hear, ay, plus points na po yan. For example, uh, one of the rotating questions, rotating because sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not, but every year I have clients, I have students who get asked this question. Talk about a law. Okay? Talk about a law that you, uh, <clears throat> talk about a law that you think is good or talk about a good law in your country. You know, uh, in that way. Um, a lot of people talk about environmental laws, which I think is good. Okay, because uh, educated people tend to be more aware about uh, environmental issues. So, maganda choice yun. But, if my examiner okay, was female, I would, I, I would probably talk about, uh, what's this? The, uh, the vow, vow C, the Violence Against Women and Children's Act. Pa rin ba siya o law na siya? I'm not familiar. I don't know kung law na siya, but uh, it, it was... Uh, created a few years ago and yeah violence against women and children and it's fair favorable to you and it's very uh, it's very modern and it's very progressive and your examiner will probably appreciate that answer lalo na um babae yan. right so that's one of the hacks that i can tell you try to <clears throat> try to you know build some uh well, build a picture of the examiner in your head and then anticipate what answers would they learn? Because it's easier to get a good assessment that way. Okay? <clears throat> Did I done? Next tip. Tip number four. Admit ko lang si Casey. There you go. Tip number four. Uh, one of the things that really hold back people from, uh, from a better performance in the test is shyness. So my tip number four is forget about your shyness i know it's easier it's easy to say difficult to do easier said than done but if you're serious about getting a good score you try it there are some techniques that you can use to maybe help you uh, avoid that shyness a little bit the first one in invento ko lang you won't find them in a in a official rep, an official reference or a textbook so I just created these, you know, these schemes. Uh, the first one, I call it the movie star method for those aspiring actors and actresses out there. Have you tried the movie star method? You're shy because you don't want to reveal <coughs> things about you. <coughs> you don't want to open up. Everybody has that. At some point in our lives, we, we have that feeling or we have that attitude. But for the IELTS test, it's not very constructive. So what do you do? Imagine you need to bring out the inner actor in you. Imagine in you that the test, imagine in you that uh, the person uh, taking the test is just a role, just a character that you're playing. Mas may lalabas din yung ngayon yung ano, yung mga answers na yan. Eh. Okay, try it out so that if you don't want to be uh, held back by your shyness, then come up with a persona. Come up with a different personality. Remember, the answers that you give in the IELTS test don't need to be 100% true. Okay, let me repeat that. <clears throat> the answers that you give in the IELTS test don't have to be 100% accurate or 100% true. And sometimes, if you give them... Uh, your true answer, it might be boring or it might not get you the answer that you like. For instance, uh, here's another common question in the IELTS test. Uh, IELTS test. Talk about your dream house. Talk about your dream house. And I know a lot of Filipinos would say, 
um, oh, I'm a simple person, so you know, I just want uh, uh, you know, uh, as a, a small house because we are not many in the family and it's easy to clean. Okay, pwede na. If that's uh, what you really want. However, if you give that kind of answer, it's you won't be able to show the full extent of your vocabulary and of your of, of these terms that you know. Mm -hmm. uh, my mentor, the person who really taught me almost everything that I know about the IELTS, an Australian guy by the name of Bob, ang sinasagot niya lagi to that question is, oh, you know, Mike, I like to, I like to try living in a castle, maybe for a year. O, titira daw siya sa kastilyo. Totoo ba yun? So, is that true, Bob? No, it's not. Sabi niya, why would I live in a castle? Pero sabi niya, I gave that answer because <clears throat> it, will, it will allow me to use terms like a moat. Okay, moat. Are you familiar with that term? Let me type it. Do you know what a moat is? There, I put it in the chat box. Moat. This is the ditch. Uh, moat. Mangka. De joke lang. This is the ditch that they dig around castles that's been opened on the too big. So if there are people, uh, if there are enemies attacking, it would slow them down. Then you can hit them with arrows or whatever defenses that you have. If you said, I just like a simple house, hindi mo magagamit. Okay? You can use the word spire. I'd like to live in the tallest, the tallest spire of the castle. Yung simple house yan, wala namang spire yung simple house. Okay. You can say, I think it's exciting to have a, and dramatic to have a drawbridge instead of a regular door. Drawbridge. Oh, nga naman, no? Mapapakita mo na yung vocabulary mo. So sometimes, the best answer is not what you really like or what you really want, but something else. That's why it's worth preparing. It's worth spending some time browsing the possible questions and then thinking, what, would, what kind of answer would help, uh, help me get the highest score possible? Let's take a look at some of your questions now uh, from Trish. So, sir, kahit po limited yung knowledge nyo, they see how comfortable you are in speaking the language. Oh, that's, a, that's one of the keywords, comfortable. Let me show you this. Mm, where's the gradient? I mentioned ni Trish yung comfortable. Let's take a look at this. This is the official grading system, the public version. Mm -hmm. Sabi ng band 7, speaks at length without noticeable effort. So yes, if you can show the examiner how comfortable you are, then mas mata, matas yung score ninyo. That's at least a 7. Right? So what does that mean? Comfortable or without noticeable effort? It means that you're not struggling with your answer, that you don't have too many long silences. Does it show in your face that you're having a hard time? So, Trisha, yeah, that's a good, um, that's a good comment. Show them that you're comfortable. And then from Nomer, sir, is it too much to put emotions as you answer? Oh, another nice uh, comment. Uh, one of the easiest ways to increase your score is to use your face when you're answering, to use your hands when you're answering, to use changes in pitch, changes in tone, changes in volume when you answer. In short, sir, no more. Mas malinaw yung mensahe okay? at mas matas malamang yung grade if you put emotions into answer. Um, too much emotion? Uh, I think for most of the people I interview, a lot of people, when you start interviewing them, they turn into robots. They start sounding like the typical reader in church. So they, uh, first reading, a reading according to the book of Genesis. In the beginning was darkness, and then God said, let there be light, and boom, there was light. Um, Guys, you're talking about the creation of the universe. So shouldn't there be more what, uh, more excitement in your voice? Diba? Karamihan nun ang test. Kaya nahirapan si 
because they don't use their emotions. You know what? If they ask you to talk about uh, what to talk about uh, visited uh, a city that you visited, and you're telling them about your happy experiences, alam yung gawin yung magsmile kayo. Why? Even if the examiner doesn't look at you, maririnig nila yung smile. Remember in communication, the bulk of the message okay, is transmitted by how you say it and not really by the exactly by the words that you say. Importante paano mo sinabi. Okay? Two people can say the same words, but if they say it differently, magkaiba yung mensahe. For instance, here's an example. <clears throat> uh, friend, friend, Pogi ba ako? Ako pa rin. Siyempre naman, number one. Ikaw ang pinakagwapo dito eh. Okay? So I'm gonna repeat the same words now but with a different tone. Uh, pare, palagay mo ba? Pogi ako? Oh, siyempre naman. Ikaw ang pinakagwapo dito eh. So, did the message change? Well, I'd like to think that it did. So, minsan kasi umaasa lang kayo sa vocabulary, sa grammar. You know what? Try to inject some emotion in your voice. Try to draw the examiner's interest. Because examiners, frankly, a lot of them are bored with the job because they keep on asking the same questions over and over again over the course of their career. And people answer the same thing over and over again. Kami niya ng mga interesting. You're gonna make a better impression if you do that. So, Sir Nomar, Dagdagan natin yung emotion. Huwag mong bawasan. Dagdagan ba natin? Uh, next. Sir, can we use idiomatic expressions in speaking? Of course you can. However, just because you use idioms doesn't mean automatic matas na yung score. Um, Korean learners do this a lot. So uh, a lot of uh, schools there, they give their students a list of idioms, idiomatic expressions to memorize. Okay. Pero minsan, hindi natural yung pagkagamit. Okay. If you're gonna use idioms, make sure that it's the perfect topic, it's the perfect opportunity to use that expression. Kasi pag pinilit ninyo, instead na maging seven, bababa sa six. Yan. And you know, it's actually, according to research, it's impossible. It's, nah, hindi naman impossible. It's very, 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 very difficult to speak in English without using idioms. In fact, some some studies uh, have come uh, <clears throat> but uh, have come up with this conclusion that every second sentence that English speakers say contains some sort of idiom or idiomatic expression. I don't even teach it that much to my students, but a lot of them still get seven. Mm -hmm. So I'm later I'm gonna tell you what I teach them. So pwede po bang gumamit ng idiomatic expression? So naman make sure you're uh, using it properly and it's not forced. Next. Ah, thank you. No, no problem. No problem. Just type your answers and uh, I'll answer right away. So, balik tayo sa shyness. So, just pretend that it's a role that you're acting. If you're not comfortable with that, there's another method and uh, I also use this one. It's called the giant robot technique. Yeah. Have you watched Voltes Five? or diamonds. For the younger set, uh, have you ever seen Power Rangers? So they get into the inside this giant robot and then they control it from the inside, right? So kung mahihain kayo, one way that you can get past that barrier is by imagining you're a small person and then you're inside here. Okay? That this face, okay, that this body, this facade, is just a giant robot that you're controlling that the real you is hidden away okay, inside here. You are safely, you are safe inside and you're protected by this space. In that way, kahit magkamali kayo, you're just gonna laugh about it. And that's one more thing. If you make a mistake, a major, even a major mistake in the test, you have two main options. You have other options, but two main options, all right? First one is to get embarrassed, okay? to get depressed, to react in a negative way. The second, way, the second option is to <laughs> react in a positive way uh, by just laughing about it. Mas maganda mar oh my God, sir, I'm so sorry, Mr. Examiner, I made a mistake. You shouldn't act like that. You should just laugh about it. Uh, oh, no, wait, 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 let me change that one. It's, I think that's a bit off topic. Let me see. Oh, it's like this. 
show them a positive face instead of reacting uh, negatively. Because the way that you act, the face that you show, affects other people because ano tayo eh? people are social animals. We can affect other people just uh, you know with our answers, uh, with the way that we present ourselves. So react positively even if you make mistakes. Next. <clears throat> Next hack. How to improve quickly. Get good practice partners. Make sure that the people that you're practicing with have some knowledge about the test and they can really help you instead of pulling you down. Because if you practice, if you're intermediate, intermediate level now, and you practice with people who make mistakes all the time, you might start thinking that the mistakes that you hear are the real answers. Baka imbis na ma-improve, okay, bumaba pa yung level, baka sumama pa yung grammar, baka maging limited yung answer ninyo. <coughs> Okay, um, I've met some clients in the past who tell me, ah, sir, I practice with my daughter. Oh, okay, that's nice. Is your daughter taking the IELTS test? Uh, no, sir. <clears throat> so how does she know what to ask you? Diba? Parang, hmm, maybe it's better if you, if you join a group like IFNG. <laughs> it's, it's readily accessible and it's open to everyone who's interested. And then you find people who have the same goal as you are, as you have. Okay? Find people who know a little bit more about the IELTS just rather than, what, a 12-year-old? Ma'am, gano'n po katanda yung anak niya? Sir, actually, magaling mag-English kasi bata pa lang sa nanonood ng YouTube na Peppa Pig, ganyan. Pero ngayon, 12 na siya. Guys, <clears throat> 12, the IELTS test wasn't designed for 12-year-olds. It's, it's designed for college, at least college-level uh, people. Okay, so yes, uh, she might be able to practice with you and it's better than nothing. But if you have better options, please do so. Um, what else? Uh, make sure that uh, some of the, or the majority of the people that you practice with okay, have taken, ano na tayo sa teachers na tayo? Make sure that the teachers that you have, the people that you listen to, first of all, have taken the test themselves. Because it's uh, reading about something is different from actually doing it. Parang madali lang pag binasa mo or nanood ka ng YouTube video. But when you're there, you will feel the pressure. It will be, it will be really, really uh, a different experience. So make sure they have actual experience. Secondly, when you're choosing a teacher or a speaking partner who's taken the test before, uh, if it's okay for them to tell you their previous score, Okay, then maybe you can ask that. Uh, if you want a 7, then a 6.5 wouldn't be able to help you. Same thing in martial arts. If you want to, if you want to become a black belt, your teacher or your instructor, martial arts instructor, should at least be a black belt and not a yellow belt or not a blue belt. Kailangan mas mataas. Gets nyo? Do you, do you get what I'm talking about? Um, like uh, I had this experience many years ago. So I just finished class and I asked for their output and then I saw this letter and I asked uh, the student, sir, why did you write it like this? I, we just discussed a few minutes ago. It should be like this. Eh, sir, sabi kasi ni classmate, ganyan dapat eh. Ah, okay. Sir, nag-test na ba si classmate? Oh, sir. Ano nakuha niya? Four. Ah, okay. So, you listen to somebody who got a band four and you didn't listen to the guy who got a band nine. Is that logical? Di ba? Parang gusto mo na, gusto mo na matas na score pero nakinig ka doon sa mababa yung score. Ah, it doesn't make sense. I, I don't know why sometimes people are illogical like that. If you want to get a good score, make sure that you get good quality, high quality practice. Next, tip number six. You should have the grading system. Balik tayo sa grading. So I showed you this before. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So this is the official grading system used 
the IELTS test. Uh, this is the public version. You can download this by typing on Google, IELTS Speaking Descriptors. And it's downloadable. You can save it if you want. However, some of the terms here might be difficult to uh, interpret for people who are not familiar with it. So I'm going to help you interpret them in a simpler manner. There are four areas. Fluency and coherence, that's 25% of your score. <clears throat> Lexical resource, 25%. Grammatical range and accuracy, 25%. And pronunciation, not accent, huh? not accent. Pronunciation is another 25%. And most of you need a seven, right? Because uh, you're nurses. So let's take a quick band seven. So here, there are three bullet points, band seven. But to make things easier to understand, I want to focus on, do we have time? Okay, we have time. So I'm going to cover all of them. The most important one for me is this. Speaks at length without noticeable effort or loss of coherence. What does this mean? Don't give short answers in the IELTS test. In real life, uh, in our everyday lives, we, we can give short answers. Uh, did you enjoy your breakfast? Yes. Uh, did you encounter a lot of traffic uh, earlier? No. Short answers. But this is a speaking test, so you cannot do that. You need to give more detailed answers. That's the first condition. Speaks at length. What if you keep on giving short answers? <clears throat> what happens? Let's take a look at band six. Is, we le he, uh, is willing to speak at length? At least we didn't share. How about band five? Uh, usually maintains the flow of speech, but uses repetition, self-correction, and or slow speech to get going. So you can be too slow. Number band four, cannot respond without noticeable pauses. Ah, so if you pause all the time and you have so many long gaps and long silences, band four na lang yan. May speak slowly, with frequent repetition and self-correction, quadruple. I don't think anyone right now is at this level. Most of you are probably five or six right now. Okay, but with a little practice, you can get to a seven. So how do you do this? Give longer answers. Make sure that your answer has a follow-up. Next condition. Speaks at length without noticeable effort. So over ko na kanina. Even if you give a long answer, but the examiner notices that you're struggling a lot, then it's still not a band seven. It should sound natural. So, paano yun? Paano magiging sound natural? By repetition, by doing it every day. I mean, if you only practice once, you're speaking once a week. Do you expect to become an expert with that? I mean, varsity players, for instance, they practice twice a day, five to six times a week, uh, once in the morning before class, so at 5 a.m. And then again, after classes, mga six or seven in the evening, at practice na naman to get better at their sport. And what about you? What about speaking? Uh, even in your jobs in nursing, if you only practice taking what, the blood pressure readings once a week, Edi mabagal yung improvement. Nothing can beat repetition. I don't. <clears throat> I prefer saying repetition rather than practice. Okay, so guys, ah, dalasan niyo naman ng konte. Wag naman once a week lang or once a month lang. It's it's like you you want to learn how to dunk, but you only practice uh, once a month. Uh, it's not gonna happen. Okay, so speak at length without noticeable effort. Show them that you're comfortable. <clears throat> Try to be as natural as you can. And the next condition is, speaks at length without loss of coherence. I mean, you can give a long answer without going off topic. Some people can give long answers, pero kung san san na yung sagot nila. Everything that you say must be answering the question or must be supporting your answer. I'm going to show you an example. Okay, can somebody give me a simple question? Sige po. I'll demonstrate this to you. A simple question.
Ah, okay, yeah, sure. Let's use that one. Guys, uh, just share your questions or your what your chat with, with the whole group. Uh, don't send me a DM, please, so that everyone can learn, all right? So let's get one of these. Uh, oh, where do you come from? That's uh, that's easy, uh, and it's a very common opening question. Uh, probably... I'm from where... the Philippines. Uh, from yes. The Philippines. I'm going to demonstrate what I mean by speaks at length without loss of coherence. De demonstrate ko lang siya. Okay? So, pakinggan niyo, listen closely. The examiner asks, <coughs> Okay, so where do you come from? Sasagot ako, Ah, I come from the Philippines, specifically the province of Pampanga. And, um, you know, back in the 90s, we were uh, devastated by the ex explosion of uh, Mount Pinatubo. And a lot of people were displaced. And whenever I hear that word, displaced, I think of the great diaspora, which happened to the Israelites uh, more than 2,000 uh, years ago. And Moses is my idol. Hmm. Ano raw? <laughs> so the question was, where do you come from? Nasagot naman. It was uh, being answered at first. But then what happened? Kung saan saan na napunta yung sagot, and I went off topic. I, I know that's an exaggerated example, but I've encountered, I've interviewed a lot of people who actually made that kind of mistake. So just stick to the topic, answer directly. Make sure that what you're saying is answering the question. You need to speak at length and you need to do it without going off topic. Uh, you um, if you want to answer some of the questions, uh, I will dedicate maybe 20 or 30 minutes uh, for that. I'm going to help you with, with questions. So if you want me or if you want to answer some questions or if you want me to check your answer, just prepare them. I'll answer them for you. So some, uh, some questions here from Maureen. In your opinion, how long should a person study? Oh, good one in order to achieve his or her desired score for IELTS? <laughs> this is a complex question. First of all, what's the, desired, what's the desired score? Of course, a person targeting a seven should study longer than a person just targeting a five. That's one factor. Secondly, how good is the person in the first place? If, you, if you're well-educated and you speak and you read regularly, you watch uh, English shows, uh, and your friends, and your friends are also educated, and you speak English often, uh, then you, <clears throat> your study time will be shorter. But if you what if you've been working, uh, what in a skilled trade maybe in your country, and you're always speaking in the vernacular, like maybe you're a kapampangan uh, carpenter. For example, uh, because I, I'm in Pampanga and I have a lot of clients with this profile or your butcher, then of course it's going to take you much longer. So depending, po, depending on your existing level and depending on your target score. If you want me to give an estimate, hmm. I've read a study a long time ago from Cambridge and it says that it takes about, what, six weeks to improve by a little bit, maybe by 0.5. But in my experience, a lot of our clients, okay na yung six weeks. So I'd say if you're targeting a seven, a minimum of six weeks. Um, our most popular program in my company is the three-month program. Okay, And uh, it's I'm not a fan of unlimited reviews, all right? I know that a lot of review centers offer the unlimited job, unlimited for life, unlimited for 10 years. Uh, but in my experience, uh, it's not a good scheme. Why? People become lax. They become lazy when they know it's unlimited. Ah, magpa-practice na lang ako pag malapit na yung test. Okay? If, you, if you really want to succeed in something, give yourself a deadline. All right? And Ma'am Maureen, I suggest at least six weeks. Taking into consideration, maybe you have a job, you have a 12-hour shift, you have three children, uh, you go to church regularly. Kasi ang dami, as adults, ang daming nga na eh. Ang dami natin ginagawa. There are so many things that we, that demand our attention. 
So uh, the busier you are, the longer your preparation time should be. To give yourself uh, enough time to dedicate to these activities. Okay. Next question. How will I attack IELTS? I have like 50 days for preparation. 50 days, that's almost two months. Oh, yeah, that's good if you have 50 days. Um, first thing is you map out your review. So maybe get your old planners or get your current planner <laughs> or download something on your phone and then map it out, map your review. You should be doing something every day. Sir, every day, pati Sunday, you want to pass, right? Yeah, every day. It doesn't mean three hours. It doesn't mean one hour. It can be as little as 15 minutes as long as you're doing something every day. And then you map it out. What are you going to focus on on Monday? What are you going to focus on on Tuesday? Uh, for my students in uh, in the room right now, I see some familiar names. Okay. If you want help, if you want uh, me to help you with planning, what topics to study on each day, what time to do it, how long to do it, then please tell me during our one-on-one -on -one consultations. Tulungan ko kayo. We'll map it out on an Excel chart. All right? So map out your preparation. Okay. How many times a week are you going to uh, do something about your listening skills. How many times a week and what time and for how long for each session are you planning to improve your speaking test? Okay. And it's not doing, it's not about doing drills all the time because there are so many supporting activities that you can do. Okay. So, <clears throat> let's go back to the grading system. So, uh, band 7 may demonstrate language-related hesitation at times or some repetition and or some self-correction. Good news, hindi naman pala kailangan perfect and flawless and no mistakes. So even if you have some hesitation, some repetition, some self-correction, it's still possible. Because if you don't know this, band 9 na po yun. Kung wala kayong hesitation or repetition. Okay, next. Uses a range of connectives and discourse markers with some flexibility. Ano ba itong mga connectives na ito at saka discourse markers? Uh, minsan tawag nila dyan mga signpost words. Okay. Connectives. And or no but Some post of discourse markers, uh, in my opinion, as I see it, on one hand, on the other hand, for some, for others. Meanwhile, first, second, third, finally, lastly, in conclusion, to finish, to end. These are connectives and discourse markers. To get the seven, you need to use those. Kung hindi nyo ginagamit, gamitin nyo na. Why? If you use these things, mas manami kayo masasabi. And especially if they ask you, what are the advantages and disadvantages of being, let's say, of being famous? So you can, instead of saying, ah, of course, uh, it's good because uh, when you are well-known, you can make a lot of money and... Uh, uh, people uh, respect you, uh, and uh, but but of course you don't have privacy, and uh, some people they like bashing you. Okay, the content is good, but it can be structured better. You can say, oh well, there are good things and bad things about it. On the one hand, if you're well known and popular, it's easier to make money through endorsements, through business deals. So that's the first one. Uh, a second benefit would be the influence that you exert over other people. When you say something, people believe you. On the other hand, it can also be difficult because famous people don't have any privacy. Sometimes they just want to eat in silence and people approach them to ask for a selfie or maybe an autograph. Uh, and one more thing, Odiba. Mas at all, mas structured. And by using these discourse markers, you're allowing yourself a little bit more time to think. In fact, you shouldn't be using uh, these things for speaking only. You should also use them for writing. So both, for both writing and speaking, start using them. However, make sure that you use them properly. Wag naman OA. Wag naman ulit ulit. Because uh, if the examiner notices that instead of helping you, Mapapako kayo sa siguro band 6. No, look at band 6. <clears throat> Uses a range of connectives and discourse markers, but not always appropriately. Gumamit ka nga on the other hand. 
gumamit ka nga ng first, second, third. Pero hindi siya appropriate. So hindi sakto yung pagkagamit. Band 6 lang po yun. Make sure that you use them properly. Okay. Next. 25% of your score comes from lexical resource. This one. So tignan natin yung band 7. First bullet point. Uses vocabulary resource flexibly to discuss a variety of topics. So parang mahirap, no? Ganito lang yan. <coughs> Never give short answers. Okay. How can you show that you know a lot of words? <laughs> By saying more. So in fact, if you just follow what I said here previously, speaks at length, madadamay na rin yan. So please give longer answers. Make sure that you have follow-up statements. Make sure that you're explaining. Okay? Next. Oh, may nagtanong kanina. Sir, okay bang gumamit ng idiomatic expressions? It says here, to get a band 7, you need to use some less common and idiomatic vocabulary and show some awareness of style and collocation with some inappropriate choices. Uy, may bonus pa, oh. So even if you make a few wrong choices, pwede ka pa rin maka-7. Konti lang, ha? <laughs> Baka naman majority. <coughs> okay? So yeah, you should start using idioms. But again, don't force it. Huwag niyong pilitin. It should be natural. And you'd be surprised kung gano'n lang kakonti yung kailangan niyo. You don't need an idiom like every one minute. If you can demonstrate proper usage to the examiner, what, every every three or four minutes, I guess okay na yun. Eh. Ang importante, huwag niyong masyadong pipilitin. And if you're gonna use one, uh, make sure that it's it's exactly uh, the correct expression that's uh, that's the best fit okay, for that sentence or for that statement. Eh, wag niyong pilitin yung, ah, it's raining cats and dogs. <laughs> Maririnig kasi nila yun sa boses ninyo eh. Pag pinipilit niyo. If, the, if you haven't practiced using it, then wag niyong gamitin sa test. Sir, paano namin magagamit itong mga manyamorize namin yung dramatic expression sa test? Well, practice saying them. Because if you just say them for the first time during the test, majajahe kayo, mahiya kayo. It's like speaking in English in public for the first time, nangakajahe. Dahil wala kang practice. So if you want to use this, practice saying them out loud. Okay? Make sure that you record yourself saying them. Uh, ano ba itong ano, style and collocation? Uh, just say things properly. Kunwari, ano yung tama? Black and white or white and black? Siyempre, black and white. O, ano yung tama? Cookies and cream? O, cream and cookies? Siyempre, cookies and cream. O, Ano pa ba? The land of milk and honey or the land of honey and milk? Ano ba yung tamang co-location or yung positioning ng mga words na yan? Siyempre, land of milk and honey. Oh. Do you do an essay or do you write an essay? Anong tama? Palagay nyo. Do or write? Do an essay or write an essay? Type your answer in the chat box. <coughs> So ano po yung tamang collocation? Do an essay or write an essay? Ano ba yung madalas nyo kong sabihin? Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. Okay. So ang kapartner ng essay is usually write. You don't do it. You write it. A lot of um, speakers kasi pag walang maisip, puro do, 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 do. So you need to find the correct partners for your, for your words. Right? And uh, most importantly, para sa akin, ito yung pinaka-importante. Ito. Uses paraphrase. Effectively, please, don't, don't just repeat the examiner's words. Iba ito naman ng konti. For example, if they ask you, uh, singa, try nga natin. No? I'm gonna ask you a very simple question. If you want me to give you feedback, sasagot nyo, type nyo lang sa ano, ha? type nyo lang sa chat box. So, very simple. Okay? Where do you come from? So, try to answer it with two sentences. Type it in the chat box. I'll give you two minutes. Where do you come from?
Ang galing naman nito. Mm -hmm. Sige, we'll just wait for maybe two more answers. Nice, 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 nice. Very nice answer so far. I'm just gonna wait for one more. <coughs> okay, let's stop right there. So a lot of people, lang sinasagot nila, uh, where, do you, where do you come from? Ang sasagot nila, I came from. First of all, yung tanong, present tense, where do you come from? Tapos sinagot mo, I came from. Medyo off siya. Not the best way to answer it. Okay? Huwag niyong gawing came. Kasi present tense, ginawa mong past tense. Okay? Um, tapos, yung iba naman sa inyo, siguro, naisip niyo agad, oh, I come from the Philippines. I come from uh, Dapitan. I come from Makati. I come from Bulacan. <coughs> okay? Alata ng examen na di ka nagparaphrase. Kasi where do you come from? I come from. Magaganda itong mga sagot ng participants natin. Let's have a look at them. Uh, the first one says, I was born and raised in Porak. Nice. Paraphrase to. Tapos may follow up pa. This is a municipality in the province of Pampanga. However, the second sentence can be a little bit more informative. Instead of saying, this is a municipality in the province of Pampanga, maybe you can say, this is one of the largest municipalities, one of the largest municipalities plural dapat yun, in the province of Pampanga. O kaya it's one of the smallest municipalities or it's the richest. You put some sort of adjective there. Okay, Trish? Does it need to be true? Ah, hindi. <laughs> it's for the purpose of getting a higher score sa vocab. If you can include something interesting, mas maganda. Pero this is a very, very nice starting point. Second one from Rodelin. <clears throat> I'm uh, residing in a, in a small town of Cavite province. It's around 45 minutes from the metro. Instead of just saying a small town of Cavite, of the Cavite province, maybe you can mention the name of the town. One of the best things that you can do, guys, is mention actual names. Wag nyo lang sabihin, I work in a large hospital. Sabihin yung pangalan ng hospital. Uh, uh, my father is a doctor. Sabihin niyo yung pangalan ng tatay niyo. Okay, my father, Rolando, is a doctor. Mas maganda kasi it's a more complex sentence structure. Okay. So, Ma'am Rod, so maybe uh, include the name of the town. Okay, and uh, what else can you add here? Instead na, kasi ang tinatanong hometown, you might be residing in a place but you don't consider it as your hometown. So, ang pwede mong gawin dito, uh, I have been. So, I have been, I have been residing in, ano ba pangalan? In, uh, in Santa Ana, which is a small town in the province of um, Cavite. Uh, I've lived there all my life. Ayun, hometown mo nga siya kasi buong buhay mo. Doon ka nakatira. Okay. Next, uh, from Pam. <coughs> My birthplace is known as the business capital of the Philippines, which is Makati. You have to make this a little bit more natural. Maybe you can say uh, my birthplace is Makati. It's a very large city in the Philippines and it's known as the business capital. Punahin niyo muna yung pangalan. Mas natural yung. My birthplace is Makati. Huwag niyong idulo. Next. I'm from Dapitan City. That's another nice answer. Walang I come from. Okay. One of the major cities. Very good. Last but not the least, um, hmm, huwag din masyadong, ano, huwag din masyadong bungacious na pang, pang beauty budget, right? Because uh, what they're looking for is natural speech, all right? If it sounds in any way scripted, magdududa yung, ano, yung exam na. So this is what I do with my students uh, whenever we have one-on-one -on -one sessions. By the way, ang one-on-one -on -one sessions po namin, they're around 55 minutes. Because um, I've heard some recent, uh, I have some new students who transferred from other places. Ang sabi na sa akin, sir, yung one-on-one -on -one namin, ano lang, 20 minutes. 
So, lagi nagmamadali yung teacher and then they're not able to give us detailed feedback. Uh, I'm sure everyone will be happy to know yung one-on-one -on -one sa amin is almost an hour. So, talagang mabubusisi natin yung mga sagot ninyo. And then we'll be able to give you detailed suggestions, basing it from your answers. Okay. Next. Uh, no problem. Okay. The other questions, sasagutin ko mamaya, no? They are not directly related. So, <clears throat> start pattern phrasing, guys. If they ask you, what is your favorite? Huwag niyo sabihin yung favorite. Doon sa sagot niyo. Maybe you can say, I like, I love, <clears throat> I think, this is the best. Oh, ganon. If they ask you, what are the advantages? Don't use the word advantages. Sabihin niyo, benefits, what I like about it, uh, the positive uh, side of this is, right? At least man lang isang word, the most obvious word dun sa tanong palitan natin. For part two, uh, yung tinanong sa akin, share it again. Uh, part two question, uh, talk about a time when you got lost in a town or in a city. Don't say the words town or city. Sabihin niyo na lang yung pangalan ng lugar. And please don't say, okay, I'm gonna talk about a time when I got lost in a town or in a city. Naku, copying. Hindi ka nagparaphrase. You need to show them that you have other ways of expressing the same meaning. Okay? Siguro yung got lost, medyo mahirap palitan if you don't have that much time. Okay? Pero yung talk about a time, madaling palitan yun. Yung town or city, madaling palitan. And you can start by saying, uh, I have, I have this uh, funny experience when I got lost a few years ago. So this happened in Po. Ang layo na niya, di ba? So please, um, before you take the test, mag-practice kayo. Tapos isipin nyo ano ba mga words yung pwede nyo palitan. Let's go back to the grading system here. So next one is... Grammar, grammatical range, and accuracy. Let's take a look at line seven. First bullet point. Uses a range of complex structures with some flexibility. Ano ba yung complex structure na yan? Uh, do you remember the simple sentence, uh, compound sentence, uh, the complex sentence, and the compound complex sentence? Ang ibig lang sabihin nito, huwag masyadong marami yung simple sentences. Huwag naman puro short sentences yung sagot natin. And the good thing is, you can do this quite easily. So, dan lang yung sinabi natin kanina sa fluency and coherence. Balikan natin. Ay, di paborito ko eh. Speaks at length. Just by following this, you're actually affecting your score dito sa vocabulary and here in grammar also. So, just give longer answers. Make sure na merong follow-up clauses yung mga sagot ninyo. Second bullet point. Frequently produces error-free sentences, though some grammatical mistakes versus kadalasan daw or karamihan ng sentences ninyo, walang grammatical error. Sir, paano yan? May na ako sa grammar. Believe it or not, a lot of candidates get band 7 in grammar. First try pa lang nila. The key here is, first of all, don't panic and don't get in the middle. My God, uh, magtitrenta na ako, hindi pa perfect yung grammar ko. May hirap ka perfect talaga dyan. I still make mistakes. Honestly, just to be honest, I still make mistakes. But but I try to study my mistakes. And then, uh, hindi ko sila pinapahalata. You know? You improve them. Um, the thing is, you don't need perfect grammar. You don't need to fix all of your mistakes. What you need to do is to isolate maybe your top two. Top two most common errors. Okay? Isolate mo lang yan. And then for the next two weeks, you just focus on fixing those. So mag-download kayo ng app, uh, find some free exercise, or go to the British Council website or the uh, British Broadcasting Channel, the BBC website. Ang dami lang English learning materials. Kunwari, mahina ka sa prepositions. So type mo lang sa Google. Oh, ano ba yung prepositions? In, on, from, to. Type mo sa Google. Prepositions, drills. Upper, intermediate, o kaya advanced, kung anong level yung gusto niyo. Tapos ang daming, ano, daming materials. A lot of people are so frustrated with the grammar, pero wala naman silang ginagawa. Sir, mali na naman yung, ano, yung tense mo. Di ba? Sinabi ko na rin to last week. Oo nga, sir, next time, next time. 
Ang tanong, what are you doing to improve it? Wala naman palang ginawa. Sinabi lang, okay, tatandaan ko to, tatandaan ko to. Tatandaan ko to doesn't work. You have to do exercises. Watch a video about it. Uh, download a, a, a worksheet on that topic. Wala naman palang ginagawa. Tapos, uh, na-frustrate. Do something first before you get frustrated. Right? Finally, hindi na ka ayaw ko yan. Pronunciation. <clears throat> band 7 shows all the positive features of band 6 and some but not all of the positive features of band 8. What a useless description. It means lampas ka sa 6. <laughs> Pero wala ka pa sa 8. <laughs> so let's go to band 8. Uy, ito mas lalo. Band 8. First bullet point. Uses a wide range of pronunciation features. How will you do this? Don't give short answers. Speak at length. Um, paano ko makakapag-pronounce ng marami? Eh di, habaan mo yung sagot mo. Dagdagan mo yung explanation mo. Madali lang yan. Second bullet point. Sustains flexible use of features with only occasional lapses. Example, uh, the F and the P problem. This is common among Filipinos, right? So, kunwari, sinabi mo, cell phone, cell phone, cell phone, cell phone, cell phone, cell phone, cell phone. Cell phone, cell phone, cell phone. My laps, di ba? Mali yung pang seven. But, but, you were able to demonstrate that you actually know how to say it. Okay? And naglaps ka lang. That's still an eight, according to this. Okay? <clears throat> so, as long as you can demonstrate that you know how to use, how, sorry, how to say the sound properly, kahit magkamali ka ng isa or dalawang beses, okay lang. Why? Because you've already demonstrated it. Acceptable siya with only occasional lapses. Okay? And the third bullet point, ito po yung pinaka-importante, is easy to understand throughout. Madaling intindihin, hindi ng sarili mo, ng examiner. Right? So, huwag bubulong. Make sure that you speak with a loud enough volume. Okay. Don't speak too slowly because the examiner will get bored. Okay, So speak at a comfortable rate and I'm not advising you to speak faster than what you're comfy with. Okay. Because if you speak too fast, what happens? You run out of things to say. <clears throat> you mispronounce things. Dapat sakto lang. Speak at your comfortable pace. All right. Don't speak too slowly. Mahirapan silang intindihan ka. Um... Here's a related question. Malaki po ba yung effects sa score when you said when you tend to say um even if you speak at length kasi napansin ko po na ganun ako. Of course, if you use it too much like every sentence na lang meron it will affect fluency and coherence. So your goal now is to minimize it. When you notice that you're about to say it, just swallow it. Lumakin <laughs> mo na lang and then say something else. Right. Instead of saying mm, all the time, maybe you can vary it. Instead of saying mm, all the time, maybe you can say, let's see. Uh, what I mean to say is, that's interesting. Ibahin niyo yung ano. You can just vary it. And eventually, you'll be able to eliminate it. So, it's a, again, it's a matter of repetition. Going back. L1 accent has minimal effect on intelligibility. L1. What is L1? <clears throat> L1 is first language. So, if the examiner can clearly hear your Kapampangan accent or your Bisaya accent or your uh, Ilocano accent or your Indian accent or your uh, Korean accent or your Chinese accent or your Arabic accent, and it affects, okay, and it affects communication. Okay, they have a hard time uh, understanding you because of that accent. <clears throat> then, baba ba ng todo yung score niyo. This is uh, this is why a lot of people may nakaka six lang sila, highest na yung seven pero madalang yung eight chaya yung nine. So what do you need to do? You need to listen to yourself and maybe have others listen to you. O pare alak ba yung anong accent? If they can identify your non-English accent or your native accent, then you need to work on neutralizing it. All right. You've been listening to me speak for what, about an hour and a half, right? Okay. And I'm pretty sure you know that 
I'm not speaking with an American accent or a British accent or an Australian accent, but I still got the nine because this, uh, what I'm using now is called a neutral accent. Siyempre, hindi po ito yung Filipino accent ko. I speak differently yung Filipino accent yet. So what do you need to do? Ayun nga, identify yung common, uh, common mispronunciations nyo. Uh, ano ba? Ano ba yung narinig ko today? Uh, instead of saying committee, we can say committee. Right? <clears throat> Tapos, uh, instead of saying uh, utensils, it's utensils. Maybe you can uh, use vocabulary.com or some other online dictionary or uh, dictionary app so that you can check the pronunciations of words. Especially if you're not sure how to say it. Also, please pay more attention to the listening test. I'm sure you're doing listening drills, right? Mga Cambridge. Pay attention to how they say things. And then, compare it to how you say things. Ano ba yung mga madalas niyong mali? And then, try to adjust your speaking. Again, one of the biggest barriers here, yung hiya, hindi naman talaga yung hindi marunong, hindi, nahiya lang eh. Sorry, bakit yung sabihin eh. Okay? Um, if you want, I can give you some sample sounds. Sige, common... Uh, common sounds that can be improved, especially among Filipinos. Um, here's the first one. So, let's go dito. Number one. ER sounds. Okay, ER. Tell me if you're familiar with this. Master, sister, father. Okay, uh, faster, uh, beater. <laughs> it's a common way to pronounce those uh, here in the country, right? So, instead of saying it with an L, you say it with a uh, U sound, maybe an er, er. Look at my mouth. Er, hindi L. Look, hindi siya L, er. Mas bilog siya. Parang U, er. So instead of saying sister, you can say sister. Hindi naman ganun ang British na sista. Yung mga Brits kasi walang R. Kaya, ah, hindi siya er. Hindi siya er. Sound like, ah, uh, sister. Ganun sila, di ba? Hindi naman kailangan ganun. Okay, sister. Uh, instead of saying uh, uh, master, you can say master. In this na cater, you can say cater, cater. So, kayo, paano niyo ba sinasabi yan? Even if you put it at the middle of the word or at the beginning of the word, ganun pa rin. So, guys, can you help me out? Can you come up, can you think of a word starting with ER? Para ma-practice natin. English word starting with ER. Followed by a consonant, not a vowel. Okay. <clears throat> Actually, minsan kahit vowel, ganun din eh. Hmm. Okay, maybe uh, I want the ER at the beginning or at the middle of the word. For example, this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yung sinulat ko. How do you pronounce it? Do you say terminate or terminate? And if there's no error, error, if there's no ergonomics, you can say er, er, ergonomics. Okay, thank you. Ang ganda ng words ninyo. Instead na rather, you can say rather. So, how would you know kung ganun ko yung mag-pronounce? So, record nyo yung sarili nyo or maybe sa, have some somebody else record you. If there's no eradicate, eradicate. Mas maganda, er. So, that's one easy. Ano tayo, mga call center? <laughs> mga call center tricks tong tinuturo ko sa inyo. So that's number one, the ER sounds. Next, number two tayo would be the T-I-O-N and the S-I-O-N sounds. Oops. Wait. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Do you say it with a... <clears throat> do you pronounce it with a, with, with a Spanish sound? And a Sean, Sean. Tension, nation. State of the nation. Ganun ba? Uh, migration. Instead of saying it with a shon, sobrang bilog na ganun, gawin nyo lang na shun, shun. Okay? Pakinggan nyo, eh? Imagination, imagination. Situation, situation. <coughs> mm -hmm. So, ano ba mas magandang tunog? Which sounds more English to you? Okay. Migration or migration? Ah, mm -hmm. uh, Position or position. Adjust nyo po yung ano nyo. Adjust ninyo yung 
speaking ninyo. So that's the next, that's the second sound, institution or institution. Number three, O sounds, O. Oh. oh, sound. So, um, a lot of the people I teach, yung O nila, laging O, oh, O. Oh. Parang flat, no? O, oh, imbis na O. Oh. But a lot of words in English, kailangan bilog. Kunwari, how do you pronounce this one? Uh, the type ko, capital, all caps. Some people say go, pero di pa mas maganda kung go. Okay. Next word about this. So or so. Mas maganda. So, oh, so what? So, if we go there tonight, hindi so, if we go there tonight, kayo ba? Paano niyo sinasabi? So, go. So. Here's another word. Photo. Imbis na photo. Oh, ang flat, photo. Oh, that's a nice photo. Anak po. In the English, you do. That's a nice photo. That's a nice photograph. So, remember in English, kahit yung mga letters na yan, ang dami nilang sounds. Minsan, O. Oh, minsan, So. Madalas mas maganda pag pito. Okay? Kahit na yung mga Tagalog words, pakinggan nyo. Pito. Pito. <laughs> Tunog English pag naging O. Oh, eh. uh, kano. Kano. Oh. So, make sure that you can differentiate between these uh, different sounds. Uh, nga, go, so... Photo, oh, ito paano pinopronounce sa English, no? Yan. A lot of us, syempre, macho, ay, macho, pare. Oo, oh, oh, kung Filipino yung, ano, yung sinasabi mo. Pero, if you're taking an English class or speaking in, in English, mas maganda, oh, that's so macho. Macho. Oh, that's so macho. Hmm? Parang, parang bitin, parang flat. Okay, so that's the third sound. Next. <clears throat> Apat na tayo. Paano ko ba sasabihin ito? Um, consonants. <laughs> consonants followed by L-E. Example po. B-L-E. C-L-E. Yan. Consonant followed by L-E. Uh, actually, pwede rin R-R-E. So, G-L-E. Uh, T-L-E. S-L-E. Hanggang... Hanggang Z. Okay? Huwag niyong lalagyan ng extra vowel sa kunwari, no? Uh, ah, Google. O, G-L-E yung tulog. Google. Huwag niyong lagyan ng extra E. Dapat Google lang yan. Google. Not Google. Pare, Google me. Okay? Google it. Hindi. Google it. Google it. Uh, how about sa basketball? O ano to? Anong tawag dito? Okay? A lot of Filipinos would say dribble. Merong extra O sa dribble. But it's better if you say dribble. Bo, hindi ball. Bo, dribble. It's better to say table instead of table. Instead of saying cable, you can say cable. Instead of saying hassle, may extra E or hassle, it should be hassle. So, so hassle. Okay, so again, identify your problem. Sounds. Now, yung mga students namin don't need to do that because we identify it for them. Kami na nagsasabi mismo. And we have a lot more of those. I don't think we have enough time to cover all of them. So, um, ano pa ba yung kailangan? So, guys, um, if you have an obvious non-English accent, the key here is to minimize it. Right? So, uh, if you want to take a screenshot of all the hacks that I shared tonight. Ayan po, uh, it's on screen. Okay, and finally, final na tayo, no? number seven. Okay. If you truly want to be prepared for everything, yung hindi ka surprise sa tanong, it's best if you write down your answers. If you just practice okay, speaking them, malamang makakalimutan mo. But if you write down your answers, then you'd probably remember them on the day of the test. <clears throat> I'm gonna demonstrate this to you. Oh, uh, I don't know. One of the recent tests I encountered. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, let's choose one. Uh, madali lang yung mga part one. So let's go to part three. Okay. Hmm. 
Teka lang. You're gonna need four to five sentences for this. We don't have enough time. So part one na lang because part one, two to three sentences lang. Okay, I want uh, those who are interested, you just type your answer. Okay? <clears throat> Unahin natin to. Who normally does the cooking in your home? So can you type two to three sentences? And then I'll give you some feedback. I'm also gonna type some samples of my own. Bad samples, actually. Uh, Let me take some of the other answers here. Yung sa akin muna. Uh, it's normally my wife. Oh, mas maganda. Imbis na it is. Gawin natin it's because it's speaking. In speaking, you should be using more contractions, all right? So, imbis na it is, it's. It's normally my wife who does the cooking in our house. She comes from a family of very good cooks. So, she's more skilled than I am. Pwede na. Part one lang naman. You just need two to three sentences. However, wouldn't it be better if you paraphrase the word normally? Okay, and if you paraphrase the word uh, <clears throat> does the cooking, pinalitan naman yung home, ginawang house, but the paraphrasing is not enough. Um, you should try out this activity. Instead of speaking all the time, siguro mga once or twice a week, itype ninyo yung, ano, yung answers ninyo because it's a great way, okay, of uh, learning how to paraphrase. And if you type it, you will probably remember it during the test. Hindi pa kailangan memorize. But the act of doing this kasi, it implants the memory in your head. Okay, let's take a look at the other answers here. <coughs> from, uh, from Rodeline, preparing meals in our house is being delegated to my mom as she cooks very well in uh, all her dishes are tasty. Right? That's a good starting point. Maybe instead of preparing meals, you can say meal preparation, her house. Tapos yung delegated, it might be too formal for speaking. Tandaan nyo po, yung speaking test ng IELTS, hindi siya formal. It's actually not formal. It's just conversational level. So I would probably change the word delegated. Hindi siya bagay, hindi maganda yung connotation niya with that sentence. So meal preparation okay, in our house is uh, the domain of my mom or what is uh, is under my mom's care. Pwede ganun. Okay. Uh, second, next answer from Kalbang, Trisha Kalbang. My mom is usually the one who leads the cooking. Palitan mo ng das, das the cooking. Although I help her when I have spare time, okay? Uh, from RR, RR, RR Bauer, Jeru. Uh, from Jeru, my mom used to cook us delicious meals, especially during dinner. She cooked with lots of love as evidenced, not evident, as evidenced by the taste of the dishes. Okay, gawin mo lang na present tense, sir. Kasi if you write it this way, naka past tense, Ang nangyari, parang hindi ka na pinagluluto ng nanay mo. So, ibig sabihin, parang umiwalay ka na ng bahay or some other <laughs> situation. Okay, present tense lang natin. <clears throat> you know what? Itong tatlong answers can be improved by mentioning the names of your moms. Seriously, dagdag nyo lang yung mga pangalan ng nanay nyo, gaganda na yung sagot. Bakit? Kasi you're able to pronounce more. Ano pa? Tapos, my mom, kama, uh, Anna Marie, kama. Okay. Nagiging complex pa yung, ano, yung sentence structure. I mean, I, I keep on telling people, you want to easily uh, have your score. Mention kayo ng pangalan. Huwag lang my mom, my mom, Leia. Sabihin niyo yung pangalan ng taong tinutukoy niyo. That's an easy way of doing it. So anyway, um, for my 
for my next um, session with IFNG, I think that's uh, two weeks from now. Okay. Uh, medyo iba yung gagawin natin. I'll be asking, well, we'll be doing uh, on the spot speaking. So if you're going to join us, please prepare speaking questions that, that you find difficult. And then sasagutin natin sila on the spot. Okay, uh, two weeks from now. I think two Saturdays from now. So on the spot speaking po. So lahat ng mahirap na questions na hindi nyo alam sagutin, i-prepare ninyo, sasagutin ko for you. Actually, we're gonna help each other answer them. Okay? So parang ganito din, just like what I did for the past uh, five minutes. Pero it's gonna be what, uh, it's gonna be our activity for the uh, majority of the two hours. Mga... Siguro mga 1 hour, 15 minutes, gano'n ang gagawin natin. I'll be answering them for you. So prepare to vote. Alright? So uh, it's almost 11. So I know uh, you've had a long day and you want some rest. So to finish, to cap off this um, session, okay, content promote, mabilis lang po, 2 minutes. Stay with me. <coughs> okay, so to finish this session, yan po, uh, my name is Lee. I'm from World English. Uh, why choose World English? Because self-review, okay lang yan kung mababa ng target mo. But for the higher levels, you need people to look at your writing work to give you, to identify your grammatical errors, to identify your pronunciation errors. And of course, you want someone who got a perfect, a perfect score in the test. You have access to teachers. Okay, you can choose the schedule. We are a small company, but we're highly trusted. You ask British Council and IDP about us. Hindi po kami factory approach. Kunwari sa writing, yung ginagawa ng iba, bibigyan lang ng model answer. Pag ganito yung tanong, ganito yung sagot. Hindi. Kami, we ask you to submit your own work. And then we give you suggestions based on your own output. So in-improve namin yung output nyo, hindi yung may nakahanda. Papamemorize namin sa inyo. It doesn't work. Okay? You need to base it from your own ideas kasi. Same thing with speaking. We don't give you a script to memorize. We ask you to give your answer first and then we help you improve it. <clears throat> so it becomes a factory approach. We have daily guidance through our, uh, we have a private uh, IELTS study group. Sorry, it's not open to non-students. Okay. Uh, we actually record our lectures that was in upload. Namin then. It's very flexible. You can uh, schedule an appointment uh, seven days a week. Tapos yung pong one-on-one -on -one sessions namin, they're 55 minutes, not 15 minutes or 20 minutes na minabadali kayo nung nagtuturo sa inyo. And we don't give you any dubious offers na bayaran mo kami, mamagicin natin yung scores niyo. Ang daming ganong scam sa ano, no? Facebook, no? Guys, you have to improve your skills anyway. You're gonna live in a new English-speaking country. So kami, turo lang talaga. Walang ano, shortcut, shortcut, walang daya-daya, right? Uh, let's stop with that kind of mentality. Ah, ano to? Uh, our recent awards, okay? we were again recognized 2021 by British Council, number one po in Pampanga and top three nationwide. And I'm very surprised that like, top three kami because <clears throat> we're just a small company. We don't have dozens of branches. Uh, in fact, dalawa lang yung open namin ngayon, pero nag top three pa rin kami. So, word of mouth lang po kasi yung inasahan namin. And we were awarded last November by IDP also. Okay. This is our OET page. So, we also teach the occupational English text. And this is our IELTS page. Send lang po kayo ng message kung may iba pa kayong questions. Uh, let me have a final look at your chats. Okay. My final questions pa ba? Thank you messages. Walang problema. I'm happy to share what I know. So if you're interested in our programs, ayan po yung phone number namin or send us a message on Facebook. Kung kailangan nyo na, kung nanggaling na kayo sa ibang review center, tapos tatlo, apat, limang beses na kayong bumagsak, try nyo kami. Makikita nyo yung difference. Okay? So maraming salamat po. That's it for me. And I wish you good luck on your test. And if you want to practice questions, I'll see you in two weeks. No sir Jeff, uh, ikaw na. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Sir Lee. Actually, na, may natutunan din ako na it's 11, 11 to 14 minutes pala yung ano, <laughs> speaking test. Yeah. So, okay. bro, sa, ano, sa timing. Very, very strict. Yeah, okay. 
Akala ko din dati 15 minutes. Okay, uh, so thank you to all the uh, participants and our viewers and see you again next slide. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Sir DJ and the rest of World English Review. It will soon, sir. Bye, Okay, thank you. Bye.